First you separate, and then you integrate Just follow these steps, and you will do great First you separate, and then you integrate Just follow these steps, and you will do great First you separate, and then you integrate Just follow these steps, and you will do great Here's the season to be serving When I was solving equations, I was feeling amazing Greetings calculus students, welcome to lesson 11 Today is about horizontal asymptotes and limits at infinity. Horizontal asymptotes and limits at infinity. Nothing to review or look back on today, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, horizontal asymptotes. So let's, let's analyze from a graphical standpoint. So here is a horizontal line. And you remember with vertical asymptotes, uh, there was a vertical line and the graph came to that line and basically shot up and down towards positive or negative infinity. Well, with the horizontal asymptote, it's a horizontal line and kind of the same thing. When the graph approaches that line, it either shoots to the right or it'll shoot To the left and you know as it shoots to the right or to the left it gets closer and closer to this horizontal line it's similar to what we called in behavior in pre-calculus because these horizontal asymptotes they're going to occur as as the function is going off to infinity or negative infinity so if, if you recall for a vertical asymptote it was the value that we took the limit from the left or the right and that limit went to infinity or negative infinity. Well, for horizontal asymptotes, it's the value that we get as X goes to infinity or negative infinity. So to the far right or to the far left, if there's a horizontal asymptote, the function is gonna get closer and closer uh, to that particular value. So, this is how they'll look on the graph. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna look at some graphs. Um, these are rational functions. So kind of our, our main functions right now are rational functions more than anything. Uh, we throw in some trigonometric functions here and there. As we get more into the course, we'll have more elaborate functions. But for right now, our go-to are these ra rational functions where it's a ratio of polynomial functions. So let's take a look at a few graphs. All right, so here is the first graph I would like to look at. And this function is 12x squared plus x minus nine over four x squared plus 10x minus four. And this function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals three. So horizontal asymptotes are horizontal lines. And so their equations are gonna be y equals some number equations. And, you know, of course, I'll explain in a minute how I know that the horizontal asymptote is y equals three, but for right now, just take my word for it. And what I wanna do is kind of zoom out on the graph. And as I zoom out, you'll see, well, it may be difficult to see, but the graph is starting to level out around three. If I choose values, right there is two point, the y value is 2.782. Here is 2.85. So the further and further I go out, the closer I get to positive or negative infinity, the closer those values are going to become the three. So here, somewhere past that's 2.978. There is 2.98. On this side, 3.02, 3.017. So you can kind of see those values are tending to level off right around three. And that's what happens on these horizontal asymptotes. Uh, you can see here this function, just to you know, talk about things we've covered. You can also see this function has a vertical asymptote right in here. Uh, could be at one, could be at a value a little less than one. But let's look at another graph. And this is the graph of the function. The function is x over x squared plus 5x plus 4. And this function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, notice this, this is a nice example to use 
that even though even though the horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero, it doesn't mean that the graph is never going to touch zero. So you can see right here, the graph is passing through the origin. So it passes through the line y equals zero. But as we go to the far right and far left, So we go right here, 0 0.0003, 0 0.0002, 0 0.0002, negative 0 0.003, negative 0 0.002. So as we go far out, again, horizontal asymptotes are all about the end as you go to negative infinity or infinity on the x value that's how you get that that's how you get the horizontal asymptote so you can see there even though there was a part in the beginning stages of this graph meaning close to the origin where it actually hit at y equals zero but as you go out as x tends to infinity or as x tends to negative infinity it never touches zero but it gets very close to zero and let's look at one more graph. And this function actually doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. So if you look at it, as, as we go to the far right, the function is just going up. So in fact, it's going towards infinity as we go to the far right. Similar as we go to the far left, the function is just gonna go down to negative infinity. So in this case, it's not gonna level off at a number. So what we've been looking at, and we've been finding these horizontal asymptotes, what we actually also been looking at, we've been finding the limit as X has been going to infinity and negative infinity. When we've been going to the far right, we've actually been finding the limit as X goes to infinity. And when we've been going to the far left, we've actually been finding the limit as X goes to negative infinity. And typically, one of two things is going to occur as x goes to infinity or negative infinity. And one is it's going to level off at a number. When it does, uh, we have a horizontal asymptote. And the other is it's just going to go, uh, it's just going to increase or decrease without bound, either going to infinity or negative infinity. And in that case, we do not have a vertical asymptote. So. I like to describe this vertical asymptote in terms of limits and uh, we're going to use an infinite limit, something we haven't done thus far. So we're going to find limits as X goes to infinity or negative infinity. So uh, let me state the limit definition of a horizontal asymptote. So Y equals K is a horizontal asymptote of f of x if the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals k or the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals k. And I should say, uh, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say, but I, I'm going to just say here, you know, k is a finite number. So uh, this is saying that the limit exists. So if the limit, if it goes off to infinity or negative infinity, if this limit, not x, if the limit goes to infinity or negative infinity, the limit doesn't exist and you don't have a horizontal asymptote. So this is the limit definition of a horizontal asymptote. And I want to go back to our three examples where I knew what the horizontal asymptotes were. And I'm going to use those for examples we can use to find limits uh, at infinity, which goes along with horizontal asymptotes. So and uh, you saw this in pre-calculus, by the way. Anyway, so let me write the first function we looked at and the first function we looked at had a horizontal asymptote of x equals three. So let me just write this function.
Okay, so this was the first function we looked at whose graph we looked at. And, and we stated quite confidently that the horizontal asymptote was y equals three. So we're gonna talk about why that's the case. Now, here's the deal. The horizontal asymptote comes from finding the limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity. In fact, for these rational uh, functions, those limits, if the limit exists, if the limit is a finite number, those limits are gonna be the exact same number. So if you look at the three problems we looked at, the two that had a horizontal asymptotes, as we went to the far right and as we went to the far left, they both leveled off at the same number. So if the limit of a rational function like this exists, whether it's gonna be the same number, whether X is going to infinity or negative infinity. Now, how do we know it's three? Well, this is the thing that's happened. So imagine I have this function. So for the sake of argument, I'm gonna take the limit of this function as X goes to infinity. So I'm gonna find a limit of F of X as X goes to infinity. So imagine the values of X getting bigger and bigger and bigger. X is a billion than a trillion. It just keeps, keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. As X gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the highest powers of X take over. They're really the only thing that start to matter. Like the bigger X gets, the more these other guys are less relevant to what's going on. So they tend to, to be insignificant as we make our journey to infinity. And these guys are the only guys in play. So as X is going, getting closer and closer to infinity, we're really looking at the quotient of this. And when we take this quotient, since pretty much, you know, if whatever value X is, X squared over X squared is gonna cancel out. And so what you're gonna be left with is 12 over four, which is three. So, we developed a rule that when finding limits as X goes to infinity and negative infinity, and I, and I submit to you as well, and you saw this on the graph, so you know I'm not lying, that the limit of this function as X goes to negative infinity is also three. So when you take the limit of a rational function, uh, where it's numerator and denominator are polynomial functions, if the degree of the top and the bottom, so the degree means the biggest exponent on the top and bottom. If the degree of the top and the bottom are the same, you just take the quotient of the leading coefficients. So that's how I knew the, that's how I knew the horizontal asymptote of this guy was gonna be y equals three. So again, you just take the, the quotient of the leading coefficients when the powers are the same. And look at another problem, uh, one of the three examples we looked at. So this is the one uh, where uh, the horizontal asymptote was zero, y equals zero. So let me, let me just write this function and do some analysis. All right, so th there's the function there. Now again, as x, so let me just, for, for the sake of argument, let, let me take the limit as x goes to, let me just still say infinity. Whether I said infinity or negative infinity, it's all the same for these problems. Let me see, as x goes to infinity. So once again, the same rule applies. As x gets closer and closer to infinity, these values of powers other than the biggest power don't matter. They, they just don't matter. And so what you're left with is x over x squared. So that's what's going, x over x squared. And if you think about it, as X approaches infinity, your denominator is getting bigger faster than your numerator. Your denominator is getting bigger faster than your numerator. So what that means to kind of illustrate this and not in particular, just with, you know, exactly how the numbers will work in this function, but just in general, if your denominator is getting bigger than your numerator, what's, what's happening at a faster pace, I should say, than your numerator. Uh, what's happening, if you say take one over one over 10. 
so you got 0.1. Then say you take 2 over 200. And that's 0.1 and I wrote 0.2. Not sure why I did that. Can't explain it. 2 over 200, 0 0.01. Uh, say you got 4 over 4,000, 0 0.001. And my basic case is, as my denominator gets bigger faster than my numerator, the closer I get to infinity, the smaller these values get. And as I get closer and closer and closer to infinity, these values are going to tend to zero. So we have another rule where when finding the limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity of rational functions like this, if the degree of the bottom is greater than the degree of the top, the answer is going to be zero. And now if you think about the, uh, the, the reverse of this case. So in this case, the denominator is getting bigger faster than the numerator and the number is getting closer and closer to zero. Since I have these here, I just want to think about the reverse. So think about if the numerator was getting bigger faster than the denominator. So like, just take the reciprocal of this. So 10 over one is 10, 200 over two is 100, 4,000 over four is 1,000. So you can see in this case, if it's the reverse, the numbers are constantly getting bigger. So they're going to infinity. And if, of course, if they were negative, they will be going to negative infinity. And again, that's what happens uh, when this is reversed. So basically that's what happens when the power or the degree on the top is bigger than the degree on the bottom. And that was the case of the third problem where we said it didn't have a horizontal asymptote. So that was the situation with this problem. And I'm just going to write what this problem was. 2x cubed minus 1 over x plus 9. And again, you, you know, you look at the graph of this, you can see as x goes to infinity, it goes to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, uh, it goes to negative infinity. And so when the power is greater on the top, if, if I take the limit, as X goes to infinity or negative infinity of this guy, it doesn't exist. Because again, if, if a limit is infinity or negative infinity, technically that limit doesn't exist. And when that limit doesn't exist, of course you have no horizontal asymptote. So I wanna review the three rules we just talked about. So let P of X and Q of X be polynomials, polynomial functions. Let f of x equal p of x over q of x. If the degree of P is equal to the degree of Q then to find the limit as X goes to plus or minus infinity of F of X. 
take a quotient of leading coefficients. All right, so uh, that's the first rule. And when we say leading coefficient, a, a leading coefficient is the coefficient of the highest power in the polynomial. So not necessarily the first in order, because it can be written in different orders, but the highest power, the coefficient of the highest power. That, that's what it means to be a leading coefficient. So our first rule, if the degree of P and Q are equal, we're going to take the quotient of the leading coefficients. That's case one. Case two. If the degree of Q, which is our denominator, if the degree of Q is greater than P, then to find the limit as X goes to plus or minus infinity. I shouldn't say to find for this case. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna amend this statement just a little bit. Then the limit as X goes to plus or minus infinity of F of X equals zero. So if the degree of Q is greater than P, then the limit as X goes to plus or minus infinity is zero. So if degree is bigger at the bottom, it's going to be zero. And of course, if the limit is zero, the horizontal asymptote is Y equals zero. And then the last case, if the degree of P of X is greater than Q, my handwriting is struggling a little bit today, is greater than Q, then the limit as X goes to plus or minus infinity of F of X does not exist. And of course, if the limit does not exist, uh, you don't have a horizontal asymptote. All right, so those are our three uh, little rules there. And so now for the last few minutes, I'm just gonna do several examples and I'll, I'll find the limit as X goes to plus or minus infinity and I'll, and I'll find a horizontal asymptote. It's a pretty, pretty easy thing to do. So these are just examples. All right, so so let's say f of x is 13x minus eight over x squared plus nine. All right, so this is the, the given problem. Uh, let's say I wanna find a limit as x is going to negative infinity of f of x. Okay, what do you think that would be? That would be zero because the power, the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top. If they wanted me to find a horizontal asymptote, I would write Y equals zero. It's that simple. Um, another example. So uh, let's say F of X is 33 X cubed plus X squared over 10 minus 11x cubed. So for this example, let's say I wanna find a limit as x goes to uh, positive infinity of f of x. What do you think that limit would be? Uh, that limit would be negative three. The horizontal asymptote would be y equals negative three. And of course it's negative degree because the degree, so the degree means the highest power 
and the top and the bottom are the same. It's three here and three there. So when that's the case, we take the quotient of the leading coefficients. The leading coefficients are the coefficients of the highest power of the respective polynomial. So that's 33 divided by negative 11. So that is a negative three. And next example. So this is how you see this, how you see this most of the time on an AP exam. So there, there are like two things in AP calculus that in my opinion are pure pre-calculus uh, items. Now, of course, there are things in AP calculus that we cover in pre-calculus, but we just cover some calculus in pre-calculus. But there are other things in AP calculus that are just pure pre-calculus concepts. One, we will talk about a little bit later, average rate of change. That's a straight pre-cal concept. You also see that in, in AP calculus. And the other are vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So th those are basically pre-calculus concepts, uh, but they do ask it on the AP exam. And, and this is how they, they try to make it a little bit tricky. You can see how easy it is to do these problems. So they try to make it a little bit tricky by doing it like so. So let me show you a, a typical, the way this is typically seen on an AP exam to find a horizontal asymptote. So they would do something like this, two plus three X times four X plus two uh, over X times six X plus eight. And it would say find horizontal asymptote. All right. So this is how they like to ask it on an AP exam. Now, you know about horizontal asymptotes, correct? That's, and we went over this in pre-count, we just went over it right now. So before I, I talk about the answer to this problem, and it's, it's a very easy answer, by the way, I want you to really think about this. So you might need to give yourself a, a little bit of time. So you may need to pause the video. So go ahead and, and pause the video and, and really think about this. Really try to figure this out uh, before I explain it. And, and I submit to you the solution is quite simple. But you know, for someone that's never seen this, this may catch you off guard a little bit. So I, I want you to work on your you're thinking and think about this first before you watch me uh, solve it. So go ahead and take your time to look at it. And then when you come back, you'll watch me solve it. All right, so the horizontal asymptote here is y equals two. Now, when they write these problems like this, they're trying to throw you off. Uh, but you have to remember that you're only concerned with the highest power of the variable when you're finding a horizontal asymptote or, or limits at infinity or negative infinity. And so some people may figure, okay, I, if I multiply this out, you know, I can, I can dissect it a little bit better, but you really only have to multiply it all out. Not like it's tremendously difficult to do so, but again, you're only concerned with the highest power of the variable. So I know when I multiply this out, the highest power of the variable I'm gonna get is gonna be 12 X squared on the top on the bottom is gonna be six X squared. So that's all I'm worried about. 12 X squared over six X squared. So the powers are the same. So I'm gonna take the quotient of the leading coefficients and that's how I get two. All right, so we stop there and we will see you next time.